You really messed me up on planning this one out. <laughs> you just Tai chi that whole situation back in my face. That's kind of what it is. would be like the most interesting for us to kind of dig deeper into is the field that you've kind of chosen to go into, which is video games. Mm -hmm. I kept coming back to that when I was thinking about it, because I think it's kind of the perfect culmination of all your little projects you shared with me over the years for you writing a blog. uh, You shared with me like a chapter of a story that you wrote, like a first draft of it years ago, voice acting, your love of D&D that has grown where the reason why we all love it, you get to act, build lore, design environments, create characters. Video games doesn't limit you, which I think sometimes a lot of your projects you kind of run into. I want to do more, but you kind of can't, uh, which is why I think when you first brought it up that you were like, I think I want to go back to school and study it. I was like, yes, do that. Perfect. That's exactly what you should be doing. And so I'm kind of interested in not necessarily going all the way back to the beginning, but starting more present with you and kind of working through what you envision your future with it to be, if that makes sense. Well, in the before time. Um, <laughs> well, I had actually never, until you said it, um, to be honest, I had never actually put two and two together. I was just like, this is stuff I like. Um, and I had never really connected all those dots, so that was mind blowing for me just now. <laughs> I can tell from my reaction. I was just like, huh, that does all seem to fit, doesn't it? <laughs> well, I'll be damned. <laughs> um see now you got me thinking back about what I've done. Which is a very, very dark place to go to in the past. Um, as far as as part as far as video games go, um, it kind of it's weird because I grew up on those. My mom had an Atari, and I had basically every system minus a few. Uh, I kind of jumped generations went from like a Nintendo to a Nintendo sixty four. Uh, was wasn't in the Sega family like at all. Right. Didn't have a PlayStation, but had a PS2. Didn't have a PS3, but jumped to a PS4. Uh, but so that's always been a yeah. part of my life. But so the the Atari side came from your your mom. Yeah, because I don't know my real dad. Uh, right. Any. But I mean, but also, well, I, I mean, when we say your dad, like we mean your stepdad. But I mean, I still call him your dad too. Um, yeah. Because when I think about. <laughs> It's just the way you drop it in there. Uh, But when I think about going to your house, young age, uh, you know, and uh, I I always remember like his chess collections, like his chess boards. And so for some reason in my head, I was like, oh, that probably can't like the video games because I remember the old consoles, but I thought they just came from him because I was like, oh, he likes the tactical and whatnot. And it's not that big of a jump from chess to especially early generation video games. No, yeah. Um, no, that didn't come from him. I actually still, I have one of his chess sets in the closet. Um, no, I probably my strategy slash logic minded brain came from him. Yeah. Because he was very, I mean, he was, the dude thought of how hybrid cars work now back in the year 2000. Yeah. I remember him like having, his partner, uh, business partner over, and they talked about, yeah, brakes can generate electricity, which could run a battery in a car mm-hmm. 22 years ago. Like he already had yeah. figured it out. Um, yeah. so I got a lot of that, a lot of that from him. Like that got, analytical thinking and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, he was a mechanic, so he had to think everything yeah. log- logically and problem solving. If this doesn't work, maybe it's this, maybe it's this, maybe it's this. Blah, blah, blah. Mechanic um, and, he was the gunsmith, right? Yeah, he was also a gunsmith. So yeah, that was more of a same, hobby. But. I mean, same general idea though of when you do one thing, you want all of this, these mechanics to work, and especially with antiques and older things, you know, you gotta figure it all out. Yeah, um, 
but I got the storytelling from my mom because she mm-hmm. really pushed reading. Mm-hmm. Um, like I got all the Harry Potter books the day they came out. Aren't um, you a speed reader too? Yes, I am. I'm, I hate you. I get that from my mom, who's even faster <laughs> than I am. Uh, oh my I god! Think, I think my record. I almost matched my record um, when I reread them, but I read the first Harry Potter book in one day. Yeah, knocked it out. And then when I reread it uh, a couple years ago, uh, I knocked it out in three days. I was really yeah. upset, but I was like, "Damn, I could do this faster." See, Rachel's a speed reader too, and I just can't. I've never been that fast, but I was an avid reader when I was younger, but it was because I would, I felt like I was finishing books quickly, but it was because I was just reading all the time. Yeah. And when you read, you know, five hours a day, you're going to make some progress through some books, regardless of what speed you're reading at. (laughs) Yeah. You know, and I just, I I remember uh, that, that you in classes finishing like textbook chapter chapters really quickly. And I was like, there's no way you're reading that fast, but you were. Yeah. I, I don't know why. It's just cause my brain, my brain gets bored. So it's just like read faster, get this chapter. Done. Like, okay, God. Yeah. Anyway, back to my topics here. Uh, so what games are you, uh, are you like currently playing with the time you got? Cause I know you're like me and you kind of dabble in a few different things. And most of what you play is probably with other people. Um, right now I've been, uh, kind of bouncing around. Um, I've been playing Madden just cause I miss football. I've been and playing FIFA for the same reason. I've been playing uh, the franchise mode cause I like the manager aspect, which vastly needs to be reworked. When you do franchise modes, do you do, one, do you play with the Packers, or like, does Madden have like create your own team thing? Uh, does not have create your own team, and I switch between picking the Packers or some sorry ass team so I can make them better. <laughs> that's that's a fair point. But um, their AI is terrible, so like you actually have to play the games to win. You can't just send them because right. I'm gonna go on a little Green Bay rant here. Aaron Rodgers has not thrown 10 interceptions in a season since 2010. Yeah. And if I sim a season of Packers who like throw 16 or 17, I'm like, that's not, yeah, that's not even near accurate, but okay. Right. So. Yeah. Does Madden do like a, so like in FIFA, for example, when I play like manager mode, which is basically franchise mode, you can do it a few different ways where you play as a manager, you can play as a player, or you can create a player who then you play as you basically you can control the whole team or play specifically as them in their position and work your way up from like being a on the sub to eventually like player manager because that's a thing in soccer how does the madden system work so it's one of three ways you're either a player a coach or an owner which green bay, okay green bay doesn't have an owner but it makes you get right um player you play you can set it to where you just play your specific position and work your way up but uh uh-huh. That's bugged as crap. Uh, um, then you have the coach, which basically you just take control of the whole team, and you can draft and set up trainings. And then the owner is you can do everything the coach does, but then you also have to worry about stadium and finances and stuff. But you don't. Oh, really that's play. right. Okay, okay. So you kind of get that like stadium simulator involved into it too, with all the like where you change the pricing of concessions and like yeah. ticket prices and all that. Like, is that how you play it? Ish, you don't really have to play it, pay attention to it because it does not really affect the game that much, which is yeah. part of the problem. Yeah, um, I just thought maybe problem. because it gave you more options of doing stuff that that you you would take that route. Now, see if I pull up NBA Two K eighteen, <laughs> where I currently have over two hundred hours in, <laughs> um, that is just in my GM mode. Yeah, where I can. Draft players, trade them, set trainings. I actually have to pay attention to whether my ticket prices are too high or too low, or like the price of hot yeah. dogs. And I get to hire my coaches, my trainers, my scouts. Like that is more. That's great. They've gone downhill since this year. That's why I just keep going back to this one. But that no, that's awesome. Um, a good a good GM mode is fantastic uh, in a sports game. I love it. I've been playing Red Dead just for fun. It's something that Paige can watch. If she wants to just mm-hmm. hang out with me. Um, 
and then I'll watch her play Stray, which she loves. <laughs> um, and then on the computer, I'm going through the Boulder Skate game. And yeah. I'll play. There's a space game called what is this called? Pulsar Lost Colony. It's basically <laughs> Star Trek, but you play with a group of people. Each person has a different role. That's a lot of fun. Um, chaos. Oh, nice. Chaos ensues 99% of the time. What's on your radar for radar for the future or near, far? It doesn't matter. Like, well, I have no idea what games are coming out in the next. <laughs> well, I like. I I just don't keep up yeah. with any of that anymore. I just didn't know if there was something like I know you play Baldur's Gate, for example, which is still in early access, and they're kind of releasing it. I don't know how far along they are in their early access or if they kind of have an idea of when that's even like fully release or. So I have read, they are now starting uh NDA testing for the rest of the game. Access okay. To, and their release date is supposed to be next year. That's all I'm, I'm waiting for just the, you know, do you even have a computer that can run it? Oh yeah. yeah. Look, don't doubt my Mac. That <laughs> is demanding i have a <laughs> you've seen my computer and it it doesn't scream but it's not happy when it plays this look i will drop all the specs all right i will drop them down to give you know me a three pixels okay i don't care <laughs> need 16 gigs of ram and a, at least a six gig graphics card yeah wow. i've got both of those and 150 gig available space yeah i've got that i don't even know if this runs on mac yeah, I've got boot camp. I can I play stuff on my PC. Uh, yeah, but it works. That's been a fun. They just released a gnome race and a bard. I I saw the bard class, and then that's when I was like, yeah, I'm definitely going to get this game when it releases. It's I like it. They yeah. put the D and D rules in there really easy, but um, really easy, really well. Mm-hmm. That's kind of where I'm at. But future radar, you're just kind of blinders on. Um, what's Until been something that someone's like, oh, this game's fantastic. Oh, boy, this game, this game, you know, another update. I'm like, all right, I'll look at it. But yeah. Just, uh, what's been your like favorite been... game in the last like year that you've no, played? Yeah. Not necessarily beat just, you know, cause I know you've also been playing things with Andrew and Jordan just to shoot the shit and whatnot. Uh, in the past year, mm-hmm. what is today? Uh, July. I, past year is not like specific. I mean, like, just like, give me a general. Man, what have I just been like enjoyed? I can't remember what happened last month. Um, like for a while there. Like, let me think about this. I know that you played a lot of uh para phasmophobia. Phasmophobia. That's what it was. That is a really fun game. Um, definitely. Well, you don't like. I really wouldn't call it a scary game. It's more just like high intensity, which is really yeah. Fun. Well, you 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 don't like scary games. I don't. I don't like scary games, but I love Phasmophobia. It's yeah. so much fun. I know from Phasmophobia is a big one, mm-hmm. and that's because there's strategy and stealth to it, which are two like my big bites. I love strategy and I love stealth. I know too. Like stealth is a big thing for you because you're you're very particular yeah. about it. Um, and where I enjoy, I tend to play games more stealthily. I like playing, you know, ranged characters whenever I can get the option. Um, I like taking things slow. But when it comes to the stealth mechanics of games, I am so, I don't know. I don't know if I would say, I, I mean, I do like knowledge and the mechanics of it all and like what makes some stealth better than other stealths. But like in my head, if it's, you know, you hide behind boxes or hide in tall grass. It's the same to me in any game, even though I know I recognize that some do it better than others. I just don't yeah. care. Stealth and strategy. Well, strategy comes into play with GM stuff because it's just long term strategy. Yeah. Um, but my obsession, which neither can really apply to. Well, you can put strategy into it, but I love space games. There's not enough space games for me. Oh. Which is why I'm obsessed with No Man's Sky. I'm not obsessed with it. I just think it's space, man. Yeah. I just want to travel in space. Paige gets like upset. She doesn't get upset, but she like makes fun of me that we'll watch 
something like the Orville or Star Wars or something that has space travel, and I'm just like, huh. <laughs> like, I'm Dude, never gonna I, fucking be able to do that. I I mean I get it. I love space travel too. It's what the maddest I think I ever Rachel ever got at me that just caught me completely off guard was me saying something about man I if if I qualified for it I absolutely would have applied to be on the first mission to Mars that when they were doing the hunt for people year a few years ago because you know you have to be like certain height have certain vision like you know these certain like char- characteristics to even apply yeah. um, for what they were like building and planning and she was just like. And you would just like leave everyone, and I was like, "Yeah, hundred percent." Fuck like, this world. I just well, not even to that. It's more so like oh, such as me. <laughs> I mean, I, no, no, no. You're good, but I mean, just like the whole you're putting your mark on history and seeing something no one else has ever seen, and like opening up the future of our entire race to something new. And it's just like those names will go down in history forever. Not that I necessarily want to be remembered, but it is such a just is fascinating to me. Like we'll always remember the names of, you know, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong and Yuri Gagarin and like the first people to do these things forever. Yeah. So like, it's, it's incredible. To me. Yeah, I don't even think that deep. I'm just like, I just want to get out of here and I want to look at space. Uh, yeah. Space it. It's a, and it's- also to f- like, I feel like it would be cool to get that opportunity to fathom the size of things better. I know we're small. I don't care. Yeah. I, I know we're be, small and to, insignificant. I just want to be on a spaceship, man. That's <laughs> it. Sounds you're fun. Going, you're going too deep. I just want to be on a spaceship. <laughs> I just, I'm sorry. I just want to go to the bridge and then I want to like walk down this hallway. And as I walk down, look outside, it's space. And then keep walking through my room. Like I just want to be on a spaceship. I think of I think of Firefly, which one of my video games idea is a Firefly game, and I'm just like I just want to be in a spaceship. I just want to be. There. I want to take off from a planet, go find another planet, land in my spaceship, be like, hey, I got a spaceship, and I carried this stuff for you. Get in my spaceship and leave. I, just want to be in a spaceship. I don't know how else to say it. I just want to be in a spaceship. I, you know what? Now I understand why you love No Man's Sky so much. I can freaking take off and land like wherever. I don't even care that much about like landing on the planet. It's like build a base. I'll be no. I'm gonna take off and go to another planet. That's what I want to do because I can. You know what? That I, is that's it's that's that's pretty cool. It's like it's like flight simulator, but for space. Exactly. Just, it's planet simulator. <laughs> and all of the crafting and stuff on World is actually a lot of fun, and I do do it a lot. I like make teleporters. But I love blasting off from the planet, fighting in space, landing in like these huge carriers like that are in space. And you can have one that can carry all your aircraft or you can send them out to missions and then land in a trading post to meet aliens. That's all I want to do. That does sound pretty I, great. I just want to go on an RPG space adventure in real life. I don't know why that's so hard. <laughs> I don't I don't blame you. That actually sounds hella fun. So. no rant rant all you want man that's the whole point of this right um (laughs) so (laughs) what since we we jumped to that right like uh, when you think about like a future game you want to make try to imagine what it would be but i'm really intrigued by now that you said that like a space game you know firefly firefly based space western essentially right um no it's a sequel to firefly the game is firefly Oh, I see what you're saying. It literally takes place after Serenity. Well, you know, start working on those rights. Uh, I gotta get in with Disney somehow because I think Fox still owns them. Well, that's rough. Yeah, that's, uh, but but that's like, weird. so talk to me a little bit about it. Uh, what like graphic style are you like drawn to when it comes to? It. I mean, it really just depends on the game. Like, I have two space games that I'm working on. Ish. I have a survival. So there's Firefly, there's a survival space game, which, I don't know, probably not into the Firefly fandom, but uh, one of the best episodes... What was that? Excuse me. Well, I don't know. I don't know if you know the episodes by heart like I do. Uh, it, there's, there's what, 11 episodes? First off, watch your mouth. 
All right. And they're, they're, they were shown out of order. I know that much. And I know that on the DVD, they are in order because I have it. I also know Serenity very well because I've watched them quite a bit because, again, it's only 11 episodes in a movie. I, I know this. I also have one of the graphic novels uh, continuing the story. I got this. OK, listen, I got the 25th anniversary Blu-ray too. OK, you know, it's special. And all right. 14. Well, all right. I'm not I'm nothing special. It's all right. Look, I just, 14 episodes, by the way, for a while there, I was a Joss Whedon fan. And then, well, you know, it kind of hurt. Okay. Um, but there's an episode called Out of Gas. And mm-hmm. It's basically something in the ship explodes and the cap- uh, captain sends everybody away uh, to go try to find help while he stays and tries to find like a traitor to get him a new part of one. And the oxygen and life support is going out. And so like as he's like trying to get through this, he keeps flashing back to how he got everyone on board and how he mm-hmm. met all of his crew. Uh, it's a great story. Uh, great episodes, my favorite episode. But I took inspiration from that, and basically any uh, space travel episode where it has something like that. Mm-hmm. And that's what you are. You are a captain of a ship by yourself, uh, trying to make it through to refuge while your ship is breaking down. Right. And you have to determine how you're going to use your energy, because you only have so much stamina per day, because stuff is failing and you right. don't have like food systems and whatnot so you have to choose what you're going to repair maybe you repair the engines instead of the food maker because the engines will get you farther a lot faster but you're going to run out of energy more quickly to fix more stuff later like it's kind of right um and my game my card game was based on this as well or uh was inspiration for this as well because you gotta give up some stuff to get further right um, and you got a perk every day that you traveled. And the perk was you got a message uh, through your communicator that you could not respond on. Mm-hmm. So you literally just had to listen and watch these messages with no way to communicate back. So, and they were always random. So you could always choose which one you got and you would get a perk. Like, oh, you have extra energy this day because you talked to your wife. Or, or heard from. Yeah. Yeah. You got a message from your pilot that left, uh, that left, and he told you that he remembered something about the pilot's consult that allows you to go a little bit further that day. Right. So it's actually a really sad story because you're just uh, sitting there, having these people trying to talk to you and help you get through, but you have no way of communicating back. Yeah. You just have to use each perk a day just to keep making it. It's like a survival choice based game. I like that. So in my head, as you're as you're kind of talking, um, what I'm visualizing, and I'm curious to see if that's that is what you're what you're visualizing as well, is first person type, um, kind of like um, the way Sea of Thieves interacts with how you manage your ship. Something is broken, you go and you literally just pl- almost like a mini game of sorts on that that system, or is it more of just I'm going to do this and your energy starts to deplete kind of like a, like a Stardew Valley of sorts. Yeah. It's more Stardew Valley, but isometric. So it's that 3d, but top down angled look like mm. Dark Alliance kind of look. Mm. That you can I like that better. I like that better. Your character run into each room, put some energy into repairing this, doesn't fully repair it, but you're able to like, put some energy here, 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 kind of spread your energy out, whatever. I like and that then, better. The only thing I haven't decided is if I want it to be voice acted or if I just want it to all be text. Um, right. For, well, so. w- would you want your protagonist to be kind of like silent protagonist? Like he knows he, he's just or she's just accepted. Like I can't speak because they can't hear me. There's no point to it. And they just the only voices you hear is from other people or kind of. It's like. If I really wanted to get the gut wrenching, I just don't know how well voice acting works with that type of game and isometric. But uh, like, if I really wanted to just hit people hard in the gut, which I kind of want to, because I right. also got inspiration from Interstellar and Matthew McConaughey is watching all these messages that he missed over like the years. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to hit people like that. 
Um, having a voice actor, having voice actors for the messages being relayed, and then a separate one for the protagonist who basically is talking to themselves. Right. And just like really upset. Allah the Martian. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, or, or sorry, and then like every morning or every day he wakes up, he can say like, okay, this is really what needs to be worked on, but I'm feeling this. And it kind of like messes with the player a little bit. Like, well, he's talking about this, but I really feel like this is the way to go. Right. Did you ever play or watch me play to the moon? I watched a little bit. I remember it was like a Game Boy Advance style graphics. Yeah. It, um, there's no voice acting in that. It's all text based, but it hits the emotion. Yeah. And that's the other thing is text based can hit just as hard. It, but it's all done in the it's their presentation of the text. Yeah. Uh what what helps it, I think, is the score behind it fits the mood of each conversation really well. Um it's it's yeah. a MIDI score, but I mean like they're hitting the tones they're wanting to hit and that really supports it. Um and I, I, I feel like that game, if they had you know, if you threw an all star voice act cast at it it would work but anything out below that i don't think it would if that makes sense but that's also because of the style of the game they're going for that super nintendo game boy advance 16-bit look feel all of that and you throw voice acting on top of that and it doesn't quite work right yeah um so i i think it all just depends but you know it's it's getting easier and easier to find voice acting for video games um out there uh yeah markets get a little flooded right which you know it has its downsides and its upsides <laughs> yeah um which is why i need to talk to cole and why i talk to rachel because it if i can get music that makes you feel things without looking at anything just by listening to music you're like oh shit mm-hmm. this is sad or, this is intense and i'm like i don't need voice actors because I want I want everyone just to hear the music yeah um, so but if I end up having to fucking hit a keyboard four times to make a sad note because that's yeah. all I'm able to get I'm like alright I'm going to have to throw voice actors into this because right. the music ain't there right so, and I already yeah. have a few people plus myself it wouldn't be hard to find for voice but, acting yeah yeah. No, no, I no, I agree with you. I completely agree with you there. Um, I I really like. So, good luck. <laughs> I've I and I really like the the story, and I'm already I'm thinking back to the episode, and also like all the other space shows that have those episodes because they all have them, and yeah. you know it's it's just it's a go to in space, you know, like. What happens if you're stranded? Even think about Futurama and Bender. What <laughs> when you're just alone and yeah. you got to get where you got to get? How do how do things change? And no, yeah, I have I have cutscenes already planned where like you wake up ready to start the day, but as you're going through the ship, you'll like go back to the ship, and it'll tell you like, oh, you forgot something at the pilot thing. And as you walk to the pilot, the ship just changes into like the academy that you grew up in. Like you're playing through a memory now. He's just dreaming. Man, you really do need to play To the Moon. Uh, is that on Steam? Oh yeah, that's where I played it. It's really story driven, but it's based on memory. Um, like it revolves around memories. And and the reason why I say I think you should play it one, it's not super long, but I think the way that they approach it in a you know early '90s style, I think I think you you seeing how. They do they do those things. You be like, oh, OK. And you, I think there's also times, though, where they do things where you're like, I actually don't like the way that they did that. Like, I like the, what they're trying to do, but their execution of it, I don't like, um, which is equally as important. You know, I like those simple story driven, you know, simplified mechanics in some ways and something that can just hit you. Yeah, and it wouldn't be a long game, though I would want to add a uh, RNG to it. Mm-hmm. What messages you get, what systems are broken, how long the travel is. Uh, well, and also you can, you know, 
that that type of game I think is really, really good for you can build upon that, right? Like you take one ship, one story with randomly generated like what you get each day, and then you can be like, okay, cool. You replay it, you're going to get different ways of approaching it, or you replay it, the ship layout can also change. Or maybe add a few more mini games in. You give yourself that room to build. What is it? Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time does that as well with their what ships. The fuck that is. <laughs> Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time one, I think maybe my favorite title of any video game ever. Like that's such a great name. Um, I it's like a you're two people on a spaceship, um, flat two D, kind of like Among Us, but you see the whole ship and like just the compartments of rooms, and meanwhile, like the, the background changes behind you. But you're just you, the two of you are managing a spaceship and trying to. Uh, move on. No, I'm thinking of Faster Than Light. That's what I'm thinking of. So FTL is also a inspiration for that yeah. as well because you can get different types of ships and it's a procedurally generated like little galaxies that you keep yeah. popping towards to get to the, to build your ship up to beat the boss at the end. That's the game I'm thinking of. Yeah, FTL is a big thing for that because I do like how you have to keep making sure your ship is good as you keep going. Um, but I'm doing it reverse. Instead of building up your ship to the end, you're trying to just get it to survive till the end. I'm getting a real good feel right now for like why you enjoy playing the games that I hear you playing a lot. Phasmophobia, the the game you talked about that's a submarine game that I can't remember for the life, or the space oh, game. Oh, that's uh, the Pulsar Lost Colony. Pulsar Lost Colony, um, your the home uh, home uh, improvement simulator. What's oh, it called? That's Page. Oh, I thought you played that too. I did when it first came out because it was just like mindless fun. Yeah, um, it's like paint this wall. Okay, done. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah fast. But uh, also games like Stardew yeah, Valley, a- FTL, like even I, the. I don't like Stardew. Yeah, that's fine. It's not every, but I know that like you've you have played it. Like you wanted to try it because yeah. the the type of game where you are put in a place and told, "Hey, there are problems. Think through them, fix them." This also goes back to your dad and that mechanical mechanic brain of yeah. you like to just fix things. Yeah, I mean anything to prevent fixing myself. So right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I get it. I get but, it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm a big resource management management person, so like those kind of games where you have to really diversify and control which which goes where. Which Pulsar Col- Lost Colony feeds that into me because if you're the captain, you kind of control the money, and control where the you don't control where the ship uh, ship goes, but you can set the star path and like you can you kind of have like over encompassing, but you have people. That are like the pilot, the engineer, and whatnot, and kind of just check in, and like that management system. And then there's the micromanagement of like 2K18, which you do the uh, draft each player, and make sure their training sessions or schedules are set. Uh, right. And your daily check ins of Fallout Shelter, same idea. Yeah, that is dumb, but I do it anyways. I'm hey, just trying no- to get, I have one, I have four people about to be max level special, everything. And I'm going to send them out into the place and I'll check it in on it like two weeks. Dude, there's nothing wrong with just dumb. Let me see, um, like, daily dumb games. How many days have I played Marvel Puzzle Quest? Uh, 1,153 days. Jesus. Yeah. So, there is another game that I forgot I played that I actually really enjoyed. Uh, it's called Ready or Not. And what that is, is it's a SWAT game. You go on with up to five people, and you basically just are storming a place and taking out all the people, rescuing hostages, whatever. But it's such a teamwork and communication-based game that it's a lot of fun if you're with a good team. Just looking at that, I was getting, I was like, oh, it's like Payday, but you're the other side. <laughs> I love Payday. <laughs> you like those team you like teamwork based games. Yeah, but I'm also a control freak, so it's counterintuitive. You like to lead teamwork based games. 
<laughs> uh, but I'll play Payday by myself because it has the stealth mechanic, it has the strategy mechanic. So mm-hmm. Which do I need to go first? Which of these guards do I need to take out? In what order? Which it also has the multiple play? jobs mechanics that that keep coming up. Yeah, so because you get bored with one. Oh god, I'm so excited for the third one. <laughs> they said it releases next year, and they're doing it all in Unreal Engine Five, so it's going to be gorgeous. Hey, look on your radar, right there. All right. I have three games on my radar that do not have release dates. It's it's Payday Three, mm-hmm. Baldur's Gate Three, mm-hmm. and Final Fantasy Seven Rebirth. I for I completely so Legend of Zelda gave me my adventure open world strategy. Mm-hmm. Puzzles uh, and how you defeat a certain boss strategy kind of thing. Um, love, but Final Fantasy games gave me my story RPG. Yeah, because one didn't really have a story. It was like just make sure you go here, do this, go here, go here, go here, go here. But four had an amazing story. I remember watching my cousin play it on Super Nintendo. It was so good. And then I played seven. And it blew my freaking mind away how good it was. Going off of that right there, what are like, give me some like three of your favorite or gaming memories. Memories, not games, because I think you just gave me one there and I'm not sure which one it is of like watching your cousin play the Final Fantasy. Is that the memory that made you like, I need to experience this in the future? Or was Final Fantasy VII you playing that the memory that like is the one that's? I mean, there. it's definitely a game I wish I could play again for the first time. Mm-hmm. It's just so good. Yeah, and it's such a mind fuck. The whole game is. Um, I mean, I've never played. That's not true. I played parts. I played a lot of Seven, but I never like played the whole thing through. But I know the story of it <laughs> of it because it's so. Oh, his mind fuck up thing? Just being in, like, a person who follows video games and watched a lot of G4 and whatnot or listened to podcasts, you know, over the last 20 years, you're just going to absorb all the plot points of Final Fantasy VII just through osmosis. And every little bit I got was like, well, that's crazy. Well, that's even crazier. Oh, it's not that crazy. Nope, that's wrong. That was a lie. That is way crazier. <laughs> like, it's just everything compounds on itself. Which is They're why I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about the this Final Fantasy VII uh, like remake entire chapter, where uh, even um, Crisis Core was a game I was never ever interested in. People were like, "Ooh, the dirty remake!" I was like, "Oh, I I'm going to play this game." I I never even thought I would, but like Crisis Core was like the peak PSP game. It was so good. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm excited for that now. I'm excited for Rebirth. I loved Remake. Um, their 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 engine in that is just really good. The way the whole that's battle mechanic the, and stuff. And that's Unreal Engine Four. Yeah, I just it's great. I mean that. It's a really um, really good game. They're gonna put out a game. It's a mobile game, and it's like a chibi version of Crisis Core Seven, like combined. Yeah. It's like really quick and fast, and it like it takes like a 200 hour game consists of down to like 10 hours um i think it's called final fantasy reunion reunion yeah highly recommend that just to get the base story uh so what's a what's another like big like kind of gaming memory for you <laughs> a fun one it's not like a favorite or it's it's just fun i remember coming home from elementary school good old odom elementary Lama mm-hmm. odom elementary um and my mom was not working yet. And I came home and she was playing Tetris on my Nintendo. And she beat Tetris. Oh. I remember her. She like left the screen on because she had beat it earlier in the day. Yeah. Came home and she's like, come here, come here. I want to show you something. And I went and watched and it was like this cut scene. The credits were just like constantly rolling. Yeah. And all these little people were dancing on the sides of the castle. And she's like, I beat Tetris. <laughs> and I was at his kid. I was like, who beats Tetris? Right. And now every time like the a casual conversation of video games pops up, my mom always brings it up. She's like, 
well, you know, I beat Tetris. I'm like, mom, that was like 30 years ago. <laughs> I don't. Ca- it's still impressive because have you played yeah. Tetris? It's it's not an easy game to beat. I know I never have, and I've put hundreds like, and who, hundreds of hours. Who beats Tetris yeah. on the Nintendo? Who beats Tetris? It's just so, yeah. That's a fun one. Um, my first good Final Fantasy game. I remember playing Final Fantasy for the first time, and it was bonkers. I was like, I can have four characters. I can make them do whatever I want. Right. Um, seven was a little bit like that, but it was like just so much more story into it, which was really good. But I also, I remember playing Legend of Zelda. I had the gold cartridge. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what the fuck I was supposed to do, so I just walked around a bunch. Yeah. Legend of Zelda 2, Link's Adventure, same thing. I don't know what I was supposed to do. I still barely know what to do in that game. <laughs> they tried to absorb what Metroid had did. Yeah, exactly. Did not do well. No. Uh, but I remember playing Ocarina of Time and just being fucking flabbergasted. I think the whole world was. It was just so good. Hey. Um, I know one video game memory is your fault. Uh, when I played Spider-Man on the PS4, you did not warn me what was going to happen at the end of that game. I'm still upset at you for that. It's not ready was ready. You're like, oh, dude, it's dude, such a great game. It's fine. I wasn't oh, ready. Man, I, can't, I can't wait till you beat it. Crying at the foot of my bed. Okay, so he, fair warning. You probably learned this lesson that day. If I'm ever talking about something passionately, like, it's incredible, and I can't wait till you get to the end so we can, like, talk about it, it's because I was a blubbering mess. All right? Some of the movies I've, I've recommended the most to people are, like, Onward, which I didn't stop crying for 30 minutes, the last 30 minutes of that film, and Rachel was laughing oh, you, at me. You and I had that conversation because it did not hit me. <laughs> I know. It, it's, a, it's a very specific turn, and you have to have a very specific relationship. And it's what Pixar does, right? Target a certain group of people and like, hey, we're just going to go ahead and wreck your life right now um, in well, their films. So that's what it, – it hit me perfectly. Well, I guess I did this to myself, but in my mind, it was a dad movie. It was about your dad, and it's not. It is about your brother. Well, here's the thing. Because we have opposite relationships of that, with you being, for all intents and purposes, an only child in your households you grew up in, and then you having a close close relationship with your dad. Me growing up in a household of divorce, having a close relationship with my brother. Yeah. And so I'm going to this going, oh, it's a dad movie. OK, I know I know this movie. I know the ending. Great. And then they twist it and then drop the hammer. And then all my past memories come in of <gasps> like because I wasn't ready for a brother movie where that's yeah. what I had. Right. Like I was not prepared for. You See, know. I was disappointed. I was like, mm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I get that. I like, guess. Sure. It, like it's, Chris Pratt out all the time. Whatever. <laughs> it's. It, <laughs> It, yeah, it's a certain target. It, in general, if I'm ever like something, a story that I think is like fantastic and great, it's because I had an emotional reaction to it. Just fair warning. <laughs> so uh, last question that I wrote down here, because uh, you actually answered some of them that before we even got to them, which I like. But what generation of games is your like favorite? I don't have an answer for that. Yeah. Because I have favorites in each one. Like, I love Ghost of Tsushima. Um, Like, the now period is a ridiculous period that we are in for this art form. It's, Mm -hmm. like, it's the highest earning media in the world. It's Mm -hmm. effects go bleed into military and uh, the handicapped. It's Dude, what's happening right now in accessibility across the board it's is... Ridiculous. It's just... It's a ridiculous age that we're living in. And um, my only fear now is that the market is becoming flooded and it's becoming... It's becoming too successful because now board members are getting involved and yeah. people who only see dollar signs and not players are getting involved which is what happened to Cyberpunk. Right. 
Cyberpunk was going to be something so great until people who know nothing about video games got involved. Yeah. Because they had the money. And that's what I'm afraid of, is things get bigger and bigger. So. Well, the one thing that I would say, which is really nice about what's happened with video games as a medium versus other mediums of entertainment throughout history that have had these slumps and rises and all that. As big major studios have focused on dollar signs, what has happened in the background is it's become easier and easier for small groups and individuals to make incredible games that they're able to make profit off of. And I feel like every month I'm hearing about an incredible independent game that's like a must play and is better than any AAA game being released. And so yeah. like, you know, people are disappointed, for example, cyberpunk, right? That's always the go-to one of it had game breaking bugs. It was not ready to be released. It shouldn't have been released on past consoles, but it was because dollar signs, um, like they were forced to make these choices that the people making the games didn't want to make. And then in the background, people are like, yo, have you heard about Hades? You're right. The industry's in like this. It's in its peak. And I hope that peak continues. Uh, and the way you're talking about what you want to make makes me think it does, which is really good. Because uh, you're not the only person like that. That's kind of my hope with Wandering Giant Games is that. Which is a great name. I, really, I love Wandering Giant for you. It's a great, just across the board. I don't care what you put it on. I'm happy. <laughs> um, I just kind of want to create a few things with creative people that I know. Mm-hmm. Like you, my friend Caleb, Cole, if he's into composition. Uh, I need to find some hard people. But uh, like, I just want to create a few really good things. Just to say that I created this, I had fun doing it. This is what I've been working toward for the past few years, and yeah. something that I've been missing in my life. Yeah, I have created something, and these people, even if it's five people out of a hundred, five people enjoyed it. I'm good. Mm-hmm. If something comes of that, like Microsoft says, we want your indie studio, or people pull indie developers and say, hey, come work for us. We can give you a better platform then I'm all for it, let's go do it. But I think that as much as I would like to work on the next Elder Scrolls or work for a big studio and be able to work on something for the next 30 years and just right. work on game development, I think just creating a couple of my own things, no matter how small first, I'll be happy. You just, so. uh, you just hit the creator's mantra. That's how we all feel, man. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't matter if it's not for everyone or nothing comes of it, but if you know it makes me happy and makes like a couple others happy, then it was all worth it. Well, it's just the way it is. This is the beginning. All right, man. Well, thank you for getting on here, and I don't know, just talking. I just like talking to you. Yes, sir.